Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome back to another tutorial from your boy Hunter. So today I'm gonna, well, this is the third time I'm actually doing this, but okay, today I'm gonna be making a game out of this, come on. So I actually gave this away completely free on Sketchfab, so you can go and download that on Sketchfab, link will be in the description. I'm not gonna charge you for it, you can get this completely free with other real textures, but that's also in the link. So you can go ahead and download those textures as well. Just the row textures. Okay. So something you should know what I did to make this look uh well something does not add up. Why does this not add up? What's going on? Why are you doing this to me? Okay, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna make a game out of this. So we're gonna be running around shooting at stuff. That's what I'm thinking about making. So obviously I'm not gonna add cars and stuff like that, but... Do I really need to? No, I don't. Because I don't want to. So I'm gonna be contending myself to the small area I'm running on now. So let's say I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna have, gonna have a few spawn points for zombies or whatever. And when the zombie sees you, he will be able to track around these objects. Okay. So let's get it started. Shift A, mesh. And let's make this a. I'm gonna use a cylinder. Why not? And then make this maybe eight subdivisions. And then the, another thing I want to tell you is the focal length. For one, I set this to 60 frames per second. Make sure you do that by this something that looks like a printer. So I set this to 60 frames per sec seconds, and also my focal length is set to 35 millimeters. Now I'm gonna do that for the camera as well when I add a camera. Okay. So I'm just gonna move this out to the side, and then tab into edit mode, GZ, and make sure this is on increments. Just like that. So now the origin is at the bottom, you know how this works by now, if you watch my video, shift S, and then Z, S shift Z, sorry. And something like that, and then scale it down. Now let me just turn my screen cost keys, I thought it was on. Okay, so let's line this up with the door right now. So we should be able to enter this door. That looks just right. Okay. So let's do the rest. Okay, making camera and making the camera actually move with this. How am I gonna do that? I'm not even gonna go into detail with this. So because I want this to, you can use anything as a camera by the way, I'm just going to add a vertex, well a single object by this, uh, should they, first I'm going to have to go cursor, cursor to select it, shift A and I'm going to use maybe a mesh and a cone, and the cone is going to have Maybe three subdivisions. Can't go less, unfortunately. But that's good. So scale it down. And this cone is going to be my camera. If I do this, control zero, you will see it's now my camera. So I'm gonna have to rotate this now. R X and 90. And then tab into this just to see what which way it's actually aiming and 
as I said, it's aiming downwards. Or X and 90. Now it's aiming forward. Perfect. Snap it into place. See, you don't really need a camera for this. You can use anything for a camera. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna add a single vertex inside of this object right here. And just a single vertex. Actually, no, I'm not even gonna do that. Because I'm actually going to do the rotations on this anyway. So I'm just gonna parent this. Control, P, and Object. And for this, I'm gonna go and tab into edit mode. And because it's got a thing right there, shift this because it's selected. And then Q and origin to 3D cursor. So now it's actually where the camera should be. Scale it up and down just like a normal camera. You see that? Now you just learned something completely different. Something new. You can use anything as a camera. You don't really need the camera object. Okay. So remember I've got that single vertex there. Let's go and do some logic. So first of all, I'm gonna need a mouse. And a mouse on this side as well. Hook those two up. Set this to look. Set this to movement. I only want this to rotate on the Z. So take away this. And this one is going to have a mouse. And another mouse on this side. It's gonna be look. And this one will be on the Y. Now we can test that out by pressing P to play. And let's see what happens. And I'm crashed. I crashed. Oh my lord. Why did I crash? Alright, so I figured it out. So using anything else except for the camera, it's gonna make you crash. <laughs> So when I just save this. So when I hit play, you'll see it works. And then shift S, cursor just lifted. Okay, so now I'm gonna just shift A and a camera. I'm gonna have to use a camera. Unfortunately, I have to use a camera. <laughs> it, it worked a, uh, in a previous file, but I don't know why it's not working for this. I mean, seriously. Alt R or X90 and then scale it down. And then parent it to this, control P and object. Let's cut it inside of the mesh and bring it down a little bit. There we go. And then for this, I'm just gonna make this. People display, people display, make this a wire. <clears throat> Alright, so now I'm gonna have to do something again. 
I'm gonna have to go into my logic editor and again do this. So a mouse on this side, a mouse on this side. Now you don't want to see this again, but unfortunately you have to. So again, there's gonna be a look, and I don't want it to rotate on both axes, only on the one, and there's gonna be movement and just do those two up. And you can actually do this. Have one this one selected first and this one select selected second and then object game copy logic bricks. And it's the wrong way around. So now I can just change this up. So instead of that, I'm just gonna make this up and down. So when I go into play, I'm just gonna save this before I do. So play. Should work now. So I can look around. But for the focal length on the camera, that's still not correct. So the camera settings is right there. I'm gonna look for the focal length, and there's gonna be 35, 35, and zero. So when I look around, that should give me a bit better focal length than it had before. There we go. So let's get some motion. So let's make a few keyboard sensors. So there's gonna be forward, back, left, right. And motions on this side. And let's see the no well let's see. So pull sort of wobble be forward. Let's just increase up. So pull sort of y negative y pull sort of x and negative x. Okay now this might be a little fast, but character motion on this one and just jump. So first I want to see if this actually works. So forward, left and right is completely wrong. Move now, so let's see. Okay, so that's the so A has to be left, and this one should be right. And that works. So now I can move around, but I don't have any movement yet so I can't jump so I'm gonna have to get physics physics and set this to character make it an actor collision bounds and convert all so now I can basically climb up walls apparently Dude, I'm Spider-Man. Check it out. I'm Spider-Man. 
Okay, I don't want to be Spider-Man. Okay, but that's what happens when you get these just wrong. So, okay, so I only want him to, you know, mm, so for your step height, I think that is step height. Step height is going to be zero point. Let's try zero point one first. Can't see if he actually tries to climb this. Yes, he does. So step height zero point zero five. And he still tries to climb up this stuff like Spider Man. So, max slope. Let's try to make this a little bit less. And he doesn't try to climb it anymore. So, that's the slope that's missing around. So he immediately tries to climb this and I don't know why. That's not very realistic, is it? And also I'm a little big for this. Okay, so the convex hole might be what's making it climb some let's try a cylinder. Actually cylinder won't work because I've got the Oh boy. Electro optical, false speed max, step height. You can even do max jumps with this anyway, so you can double jump. So let's say you want to make like a Unreal Tournament style game, you can actually double jump. You can actually change the jump height as well. Oh, I'm on top of the building. Let's see how I can how high I can go. This is wrong. I'm cheating at my own game. Haha! I made it to the top. I'm not supposed to be doing this. So apparently the jump height might be a little too much and the character size might be a little too much. Yeah, it looks like he's a little little too big. Let's try that out. See what happens. Oh, I went right through the wall. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. What happened? So apparently I can go through this stuff. Oh. Ah, I can go through the windows. Weird. That's not supposed to happen. So bugs. We're going to be fixing a lot of damn bugs. Oh, I can go through the wall as well. Okay, so... I think the modern has come up. My chumps. Okay, I'm just going to bring this down to one again. Uh, max slope. Let's try the max slope a little bit. Let's try 90. See what happens. I mean, I'm just want to see what happens. 
Please, or, automatically he's clipping into it. He's not doing the clips right, so. Compound won't work from there, so. Ah, <sighs> I guess I'm gonna have to go to rigid body. Oh, dynamic body. Going on to dynamic body is not gonna be doing that anymore. But now the jump will not work, as you can see. So dynamic body jumping is a little bit different than you know doing a jump with the yeah let's just say you're gonna need a few constraints on everything it lands on okay for the jump you're gonna have uh, servo can no okay, simple motion just like this it's gonna be up on the Z mm, I actually don't want to do it like this but okay up on the Z first I'm gonna test it out and see see it doesn't even it doesn't even really work because now I've got the step right and the See, it just snaps up because the gravity is pulling him down so that's where this comes in for one I need anastrophic friction two no sleeping three mass let's see what happens so he just pops up so transition damping And now I can use triangulated mesh as well. So obstacle. Let's see what happens. But right now I just need to figure out how I'm gonna do this jump. It's gonna be a little. It's gonna be a pain in my ass. Okay, so let's try and figure out why it won't go up or down.
Okay, so I'm gonna add a, have a property on this side, call it player. And then on everything else, I'm gonna need a property. That's gonna have collision bounds and triangle mesh. And that's gonna be for everything. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna call this, give this a property. Round. Or maybe just floor. Make sure you remember this because we're gonna have to set it to everything that is on the ground. Object, game, copy, properties, floor. Now all of these are going to have the same property. And then, object, game, copy, physics, properties. And all of them are going to be triangulated. Cool. Now for this. Add a property and why is this? Player. No, I don't need that. Like a collision and I'm gonna need floor on all of these. I was looking for the property floor. I'm gonna have a motion T. And it's gonna have a downward motion. So now I'm, I'm able to walk around on this, but I'm not able to jump. Okay. For this, I'm going to need more of an upward motion for one, and the force, maybe a little bit more. So it just snaps up, as you can see, and I can do that infinitely. Can I only want him to jump when he is actually on the ground. So instead of you know double jump and stuff like that, I'm gonna copy this. You know this whole thing. So collision. 
and this would be floor, control C, paste that in, control V, give it a true pulse, and then hook this up to where the jump is. So only when he's on the floor, he will be able to jump. So you can see I'm smacking this jump button now and it's only jumping when he's on the floor. Okay, cool. So let's see if I can do this by actually just doing the force. Yes, the force will work perfectly. So I'm gonna maybe set this to 10 and see. Okay, so for some reason, when he hits the ground, he starts jittering about. So, that might be the mass messing around, but again to the mouse, uh, let's bring the radius up to maybe 1.5 Whoa! And that might also be can be the mass I'm sleeping. He keeps wanting to go through the ground, which is not ideal. Because I think because he actually, when he gets to the ground, he just keeps going down anyway. I think it might be because of this, let's see. I can't even jump. Now it jumps. Okay. So it's not because of this. And also, this is not right. What in same hill? Okay, for some reason he just keeps giving him mixed messages that this uh, this is not close to the ground. This is not close to the ground. So he keeps jumping up and down like this because uh, how should I explain this? The model itself, this, doesn't realize okay no the player is actually on it. So basically it picks it up right there or right there. So it doesn't matter if I bring this up or down or left or right or whatever.
<clears throat> so I can put that 3D cursor down there and give him triangulated mesh as much as I want to. The problem is this. Let's see. I don't want this to be a box collider because then I won't get the slope. So triangulated mesh is gonna make it okay, maybe. This might be great obstacle and anastrophic friction radius 1.1. So I'm just gonna test it on this single floor pallet so I can see if it works. So of course it doesn't work. So maybe bring the radius up a little bit. Okay, that doesn't work. So let's try convex hole. Nope, that doesn't work. He actually goes harder than he actually has to. Seriously, I don't get it. Not even using the rigid body actually works. There's still a problem with the player physics. 
to go through everything and that uh, looks like I can still climb walls. Now I can just go through the walls. attempting to climb the walls I'm not even pressing anything <laughs> okay so I don't look like it's trying to climb the walls anymore. Only one way to find out, let's get to a pull or something and see if he tries to climb up. No. So I think it was to do with the max slip. I think there's a reason this is happening because this is actually triangle trying to triangulate this mesh so when you glide with it it's actually trying to give you a triangulated mesh of that and it's messing around so I'm gonna have to make this no collision and just give it a box glider something the same with this and this Top sign. I can. Let's see if I can climb it. No, I don't. I cannot climb this top sign. This is not high enough. I'm going to the door. I feel I'm a little big for this door. I think that's a little better. That should be good. Yeah. That might be a little too big for me. Well, too small for me. This is made for a what do you call it? A Oompa Loompa. <laughs> okay, so let's start making. I'm gonna scale this down a little bit more and then control A and scale. Test it out one more time. Yeah, I think that should be good. 
but I probably can still get through the walls. I don't think so. Well, he was trying to climb the wall. He's trying to be Spider-Man again. Okay, so I think I remember what this was. The max slope. And where was it? Max slope. I think I brought this up. And I shouldn't be able to do that anymore. And he still tries to do it. <laughs> I'm not getting very far, but okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. But that might be because these actually have collisions and I don't want collisions on them. I'm gonna remove the collisions and just give it box colliders. It's gonna make the thing run a lot smoother at, in the end, so keep her out for that. But for now, let's get something to shoot at. Because I think that's what you are here for. So shift A mesh and just make a cube. Scale it down. Well shift A so shift A mesh, control A and scale bring it up to where the camera is. <coughs> now let's just make a simple weapon. Is it tab S scale it out Draw. I'm not gonna go to our detail on this because yeah, I don't want this video to be about modeling. Now there's a good way to make like a crosshair so you can actually determine where you're supposed to, you know, make your crosshairs. Okay, so I can't do the up and down, but you know the safe areas for the camera I think I use that a lot you know trying to determine where the gun is supposed to shoot if it's gonna shoot the right direction 
So, for this, I'm not really gonna use that. But, yeah. Okay, so. Shift this because it just left it. Shift A, mesh, and the plane. R, well, 70 edit mode. R, X, and 90. Scale it down. Move it forward. Make sure this has absolutely no collisions. 70 edit mode. And I'm gonna have to press E to extrude. Actually, no, I don't want that side. And this is where the auto mirror is going to come in handy. So, before I do that, just to make it cooler, I'm just going to press I to insert and then just remove these faces here X and faces. Then I'm going to make sure this is not joined anymore I'm gonna press V on my keyboard and I'm gonna stick these two and just bring this oh actually this edge scale this in take this face again and then I turn set and X faces. Spell this out. And then Shift D, scale it back in and press F to fill. So that's how you can make a quick crosshairs. But obviously this is not how you want it, so I'm gonna do that, shift this because it is selected, and then set this a 3D cursor. Alright. Then I'm gonna select these two faces, these two, and then Shift D and just rotate that on 180. And I've got a full crosshair. Scale it down. I can see these two sides; they're not aligned. They're too big, too long. So if you really want to fix that, make sure it's exactly the same X faces, then with these two, Shift D, R, 90. Now it's exactly the same size. Now you have a crosshair. Control P and turn this to the camera. Okay, so this is where the bullet is gonna spawn from. Not from the gun, not from the gun, from this. You can do like muzzle flash or whatever from the weapon, but it's uh, pretty hard to determine. Okay, so this is the gun, and I want the bullet to fly from there, which actually reminds me that it has to be inside of the camera. So just make it look like it's aiming in that direction. So this is where the bullet is actually going to fly from. So let's add something that we can shoot. Shift A, mesh, and let's use a... I'm just gonna use a... Uh, let's try a cylinder. And this cylinder is going to be... Uh, three vertices. I don't want it to be. 
Actually, I can use a plane as well if I wanted to, but why not? I think I can go to if I wanted to, but I don't think that's gonna be ideal.
Direct on direct on Let's see what happens when I put this on the gun. Let's see if that works. It looks like it's adding from this instead of this.
Well, we got some ricochet. Ricochet bullets. Haha. <laughs> Okay, so now we got a gun, we can shoot. Let's get something to shoot at. And I'm lagging again. Come on, you piece of fucking blender. That's the one problem with blender. It just freezes when it wants to. For no reason whatsoever. But also, it doesn't have a memory dump like all the other programs, so you might, you might get something like this happening. Okay, so for that bullet, Alt H. This is gonna have a property and it's called bullet. Copy this property, hide this, you don't need that anymore. It's gonna get a collision. With property, bullet. Then it's gonna edit object and it's going to end the object. I'm not gonna give health bars or anything to this. So that is pretty much straightforward. And now when I press play, boom, 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 and it disappears. So now I'm gonna duplicate this all across my map. And I'm gonna hold D, maybe press, let me just be careful where I place this. Okay, so I'm gonna use snapping, but I'm gonna use face snapping. Cause it's always gonna keep this above the face.
Okay, so apparently the rest of these won't work. Ah, I fell off. Can't really see if it's shooting the right direction or not. Seems like it's going right through the Okay, so back to the drawing board. So I need to be pretty close for it to actually work. Get out of my way. And also these don't really have any properties or collisions or whatever, so it doesn't really have a proper collider on them. Don't sneak up on me like that, I will kill you. You will die. We'll all die. I see you. I see you too. I think I got them all. Looks like it. So obviously this isn't a proper AI for the game and the physics aren't completely fixed. But for the character the physics are working nicely now. So we got proper physics for the character. I don't have any crouch and I I think the movement is a little too fast, but yeah. Uh, off screen, I might fix that in the future and then. Yeah. And what the hell is that doing up there? Oh, yeah, that's part of this. Now I can move around the map. Well, it's not a huge map, but it's a map. Nevertheless. I can go through alleyways, I can go shoot at stuff, so obviously it's a game. It's a game. Don't get me wrong, this is a game. We don't have a lot of animations and stuff like that yet, but in the future I'm gonna put in some proper weapons and maybe some proper en uh, enemies like robots or something and give them health bars. So I'm gonna put that well put that in my um <coughs> what will be in the next video 
I promise that, that it will be in the next video and another thing I want to see what this looks like rendered Ooh, even better it looks beautiful yo 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 why though the shadows we're getting shadows I'm not seeing my own shadow that's good I'm not even seeing the gun shadow that's good okay so apparently I can shoot them in the center of the body or maybe I don't know yeah, somewhere around there. But when I aim at that, it doesn't work. You can see aiming at that doesn't work. Aiming for the body. Whoa! I had a ricochet that killed two. Awesome! I'm awesome! Try you you do that. You you do that. You do that in Fortnite and shit like that. Have a bullet ricochet and kill two people. <laughs> I'm dead shot, baby. <laughs> okay, but like I said, the collisions aren't c completely right with these guys, so obviously they're not gonna work. But you know, like I said, I'm not sure if this actually shoots at the center. It actually does look like it is. And also the speed might be not enough, but okay. Because when you shoot at this, you don't want this to actually ricochet. Suppose you just go right through. So I think the best way to fix that is to old age. And let's see what happens when I set this to a <coughs> static mesh. Let's try static. And maybe is shift X no shift Y. So make it a little bit thicker. Then control A and scale. H and it play. Okay, so now it's not gonna shoot out, which is good. So now I'm going to have motion on this side and just hook it up to the always and oh man come on come on okay I'm going to need the and controller and then add that and add that cool okay so now we got that so I think this is going to go forward on the Y let's have a look Let's for around the Y. Let's see if it glides. Does not glide. And it's gliding with the player. And it's not supposed to glide with the player. So that might be because this is set to the inside and you don't want that to happen. You can see the pair moving backwards and it doesn't glide anymore. So let's try setting this alt H. For when the motion goes up. Or two, maybe you should make the make it a ghost. Three, triangulate the mesh. Four, make an obstacle. Bring the radius up a little bit. Back it a little bit more. And let's see what happens. Oh, and I didn't add it. 
it must be hidden from the viewport to actually, you know, work. So it doesn't really do anything. And I feel this is too big. We can actually scale this down. Okay, so dynamic or rigid body actually work for these. Sometimes. And this is not shooting at the center anymore. Doesn't look like it. No, it's not. Can I actually see? Okay, it is actually going through the center. Come on. Just die. Just die. But like I said, if I give these proper collisions, they will actually work. Right now they don't really have collisions because if they did, they will collide with, they would have collided, uh, collided with the bullet. So for the next tutorial, I'm going to be doing that now, you know, making some bullets and that actually, well, enemies that actually have valve and they can track to the player when the player gets close. So let's do, say it's like a zombie thing we're gonna be making and yeah, better weapons and let's think maybe a bigger map as well so you can move around a little better mm. yeah like RPGs and stuff like that I think that would be awesome you can blow up some zombies <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna make a few notes on that and then make that on the next video. But for now, I just said we're gonna turn this into a game. And I kept my promise. Now we have a playable game. Not a proper playable game, but it's playable. It is a game. <laughs> so I'm gonna make like arms and stuff for the hands and also make like a crouch for this. But you know how that goes, you know, doing this. But the way I usually do this when I do the scaling, you will see now, is it? You will see everything is going to stretch now. So I'm gonna have to counter that stretching with the camera. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna use the previous version I actually do, you know, with the vertex parents and stuff because the rotations on everything just fucks up. So, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, just like it. If you want me to do more videos like this in the future, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and subscribe button subscribe please <laughs> no I'm just kidding I will never beg you okay I beg you do it do it do it please please <laughs> but anyway like I said this is up for download on sketchpad link will be in the description it's completely free I wanted to charge you money for it but I decided not to do that because sketchpad is full of shit but just get the .blend file, not the FBX or anything like that because you're not going to get the materials and stuff, unfortunately. So download the .blend. We are using Blender after all. So thanks for watching and have a wonderful evening. <laughs>